And now let's go into more details of how we integrate hardware VTAPs with the orchestration system or with VXLAN controllers. First, what do we need? The hardware VTAP obviously needs mapping between VNIs here. So VXLAN segments here have to be mapped to VLANs here. Second, if a VM is here, this one needs to have a mapping between MAC address and the VTAP IP address. And finally, if we are using multicast based VXLAN, we need to know the IP multicast address of the VXLAN segment. And if we are not using multicast based VXLAN, if we are using controller based VXLAN, then the hardware gateway needs a list of VTAPs. There are a number of ways you can solve this. EVPN is the emerging standard that the traditional networking vendors are gravitating toward. OVSDB is the thing that came from VMware NSX, and you can always do it yourself. OVSDB is a totally different story. This is the protocol that was initially used between VMware NSX controller for multiple hypervisor. So this is not yet supported in NSX for vSphere as far as I know. And now Nuage started using OVSDB because there are already hardware vendors out there that work with OVSDB. So it makes sense to use OVSDB to talk to people who haven't learned how to spell EVPN yet. OVSDB is a pretty lightweight protocol. It's using JSON RPC, which is a protocol that tells you how to encode information on the wire and it runs on top of TLS, which is, well, SSL. OVSDB only defines operations that you can do. The idea is that we have this database, sort of object-oriented database. It's not exactly relational. And OVSDB allows you to do queries and modify data in that database. So that's what OVSDB is. Then you have database schemas that define what should be in individual database tables. And the schema that we are interested in today is the hardware VTAP schema, which defines a number of tables that I'll walk you through in a moment that define the physical switch and the ports and the logical switch and router and Mac mappings. Now, through this schema, so if a top of rack switch supports this schema, then an NSX controller or now Nuage VSP controller can configure the mappings of VXLAN to VLAN. It can push the MAC addresses of the VMs to the VTAP and it can receive the physical MAC addresses that the VTAP has learned from the outside world and maybe do some forwarding on the virtual site. The way the OVS DB hardware VTAP schema is defined, you could have a network virtualization controller, so this would be NSX, for example, talking to a hardware switch controller, and that hardware switch controller could manage multiple endpoints, multiple VTAPs. Some vendors decided to actually go down this path and implement this architecture. And if I understood correctly, Arista is working on having exactly this architecture. So they will have virtual EOS that will run the HSC, the hardware switch controller. And then that virtual EOS will talk to the individual Arista switches that act as VTAPs. Juniper went for a simpler architecture where HSC is sitting on every VTAP. So with Juniper, you would have multiple hardware switch controllers talking to network virtualization controller. Now let's walk slowly through the VTAP schema. The first table is the physical switch table. It defines all the physical switches that this hardware switch controller is responsible for. 
In Arista's case, this would have multiple entries. In Juniper's case, there would only be one entry in there. Then there is a table of